Well, good morning, North Shore Family Church. How is everybody doing? Doing <laughs> good. That's awesome. Man, it's good to see those of you here in person. Uh, I see lots of bright, shiny, smiley faces this morning. And I know we got several people uh, traveling on the road. Um, I know lots of people going to find a spot to watch the eclipse tomorrow. It's going to be a pretty cool event. I hear it's going to be cloudy, though. You have to go to, like, Ohio to get out of the rain or something. It's, it's pretty wild. So uh, those of you here in person, man, it's just good to see you. Thank you for being here and worshiping in person with us. Those of you join us online, uh, I appreciate you joining us in the way that you can, whether it's live or later in the week. We say uh, blessings to you. We thank you for making this important. I'm going to ask that as you're able, if you stand, we're just going to sing some songs to get some uh, just some of God's word in our heart, uh, sing it out loud, some encouragement to each other and to ourselves uh, that we would just kind of get our minds, our hearts, our, our spirits set on uh, things of God and prepared for the word that Josh has brought for us this morning. So I would just encourage you to sing out. Uh, I would encourage you not to think about the people around you or think about what's going on at home or the stresses at work, uh, but let this just be a peaceful time between you and God that you're just uh, enjoying his presence and, and worshiping uh, and just spending that time with him. <clears throat> I was buried beneath my rebellion, lost without hope of redemption, blind to my need for a Savior, oh, but God. Crushed by the weight of my failure, living the lie I created, oh, digging my grave without knowing, oh, but God, oh, but God, rich in mercy, how you love me, too much to let me stay lost. My salvation sent from heaven, nailing my sin to a cross. Oh, but God, you gave me a truth worth believing. I traded my chains for your freedom, and you were the one that I needed. Oh, but God. Resurrected my heart from the ruin, and my rescue came through like the morning. Now this is my sure testimony. Oh, but God, oh, but God, rich in mercy, how you love me too much to let me stay lost. My salvation from heaven nailing my sin to a cross rich in mercy rich in mercy how you love me too much to let me stay lost my salvation sin from heaven nailing my sin to a cross oh but God all the wreckage all the of my choices you have turned to life from ashes lifted from death risen with him now I stand in confidence Yeah. 
my salvation Sip from heaven Nailing my sins to a cross Rich in mercy How you love me Too much to let me stay lost My salvation Sip from heaven Nailing my sin to a cross Oh, but God Oh, but Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaken, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. Faithful through generations, so why would he fail now? He won't, he won't, and I've still got joy in chaos, I've got peace that makes no sense, so I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength Cause I built my life on Jesus Oh, He's never let me down Faithful in every season So why would He fail now? He won't He won't He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. He won't. 
good to know that our God will never fail. He is victorious over death and he reigns over this world and everything. Amen. Have a seat for just a moment. Hey, thanks so much for being here. Welcome to North Shore family. I want to welcome those that are online also. You can take a seat just for a second. Uh, we remind you of several things that are coming up. We want to say thank you to those that helped out at Ingleside Primary. Uh, we were able to make some books uh, helping the uh, those that are at the school uh, trying to get the goal of 5,000 additional grade level books and so we will probably be doing it again because uh, we just need more help on that so thank you for that uh, groups return this week so men will meet on Tuesday ladies will meet on uh, Wednesday uh, and so Tuesday and Wednesday for the groups uh, and remind you you can grab all the resources that we have online just go to northshorefamily.org uh, and that's the place that you can find out more about uh, from salvation to baptism to giving, uh, all those things uh, are an encouragement online, and you can just grab that. I want to wish happy birthday to, to Sandy uh, today. Uh, she's the one wearing the tiara and the birthday sash. Uh, and, and so just throw your rose petals before her uh, on, on that. Uh, and it's, uh, it was Augie's birthday yesterday, so happy birthday to Augie uh, on, on that. Uh, on, on, on that. Happy birthday to Augie yesterday. Happy birthday yesterday. Yeah, perfect timing. <laughs> perfect timing. Uh, I want to welcome those that are joining us online too, uh, to Dana and, and uh, to Donna, uh, Ray and Amelia, and some others. God bless you. Thanks for being with us. Looking forward to our time together uh, today. We're going to be talking about how God created you for more. Woohoo! That sounds good. Let's cash in on it uh, and see what the Lord has for us. Let's pray together and we'll continue worshiping uh, this, this morning. God, I thank you uh, for uh, your love for us. I thank you for the beauty of the resurrection. Uh, Lord, I thank you that you uh, invite us into your presence, that you answer prayer. Lord, I thank you that we don't have to come cleaned up. We get to come like we are. I'm grateful for that. Lord, I'm grateful that you know the present heart condition of everyone at this moment right now. And so I pray for the courage to surrender unto you, uh, to uh, take a moment where we just pause and recognize your glory, your beauty, your majesty, your worthiness. And Lord, may your living word speak to us and change us from the inside out. just be still and know that you're God. You will be exalted in all the heavens and in all the earth, Psalm 4610. It's in Jesus' name we agree. Amen. Jesus 
show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Jesus, name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, you're worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you, oh, we live for you, holy, oh, holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you, open up my eyes in wonder. your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. song the chorus is just really powerful and I just want to read it to you it says I wasn't made to be tending a grave I was called by name born and raised back to life again I was made for more so why would I make a bed in my shame when a fountain of grace is running my way I know I'm yours and I was made for more it goes like this I was made to be tending a grave. I've been called by name, born and raised back to life again. I was made for more. So why would I make a bed in my shame with a fountain of grace? Running my way, I know I am yours. I was made for more. Will you sing that with me, church? I wasn't made. Oh, I was made to be tending a grave. I was called by name, born and raised back to life again. I was made for more. So why would I make that in my shame with a 
fountain of grace, rolling my way, I know I am yours. I was made for more. I know who I am. I know who you are. The cross of salvation was only the start. Now I am chosen, free and forgiven, and I have a future, and it's worth living. Here we go. Because I was made to be tending a grave, I was called by name, born and raised back to life again. I was made for more. So why would I make a bed in my shade with a fountain of grace? It's running my way, I know I am yours. I was made for more. I know who I am. Cause I know who you are. Cross of salvation was only the start, and now I am chosen, free and forgiven, and I have a future, and it's worth the living. I was made, oh, I was made to be tender. Oh, 
sing out your praise. Hallelujah. You buried my past. I'm not going back. Hallelujah. You called out my name, so I'll sing out your praise. Hallelujah. You buried my past. I'm not going time church so I wasn't made to be tending a grave I was called by name born and raised back to life again I was made for more just say that over yourself so why would I make a bed in my shame with a fountain of grace running my way I know I am yours I was made for more so why would I make my bed oh why would I make my bed in my shame with a fountain of grace running my way I know I am yours and I was made for more God, thank you so much that we were made for more than what this world has to offer. We were made for more than just wallowing in our shame, in our sin, in our guilt. God, you have made us for more than that, that we can walk in victory, that we can walk in your grace, your mercy, and your love, and that we can shine your light to the people around us, to the world. God, we love you. We worship you this morning, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for singing. Y'all have a seat. Thank you, fellas, and good morning to Kim and to Maggie and to Carl and others joining us with us this morning. God bless you. Uh, and it, it's, it's great to sing about more, but how, how about if you got to live in the middle of more? That's something that is a reality because God created you for more. John 10, 10. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But he said, I've come that you might have life and have it to the fullest. In other words, abundantly. In other words, more. Well, I want to know and live in the middle of that promise of God for more. Here's the truth. Whatever we build our life on, is where we are really expecting to find the meaning of our God-given desire to know more. Let that soak in. It's got to get below the surface, right? It's one thing to agree, yes, I want more, and yes, I want God's more. It's another thing to go ahead and do inventory of our life and go, okay, so whatever I'm building my life on is where I'm expecting to find the meaning of our God-given desire, my God-given desire to know more. See, the main problem is not what you are building your life on. It's where you start the building. For most of us, we're pulled in to start with me. huh? We, we, we start with me and the things that give us, uh, you know, the right feelings and circumstances. If they ever just lined up, then really I would be in the middle of more. That's why everybody... Uh, that you know bought a lottery ticket yesterday and somebody in Oregon won it. Uh, because you go, man, if I got one point something billion dollars, then I could get more. Uh, and life would be, you, I mean, isn't it easy of how we can generate uh, through our feelings and through our circumstances? And if we're not careful, we'll spend all of life just trying to get everything in a line to where I get my feelings right and, and I get my circumstances right and then I'll be good. Uh, and those are doing this to your life, aren't they? I mean, because up and down, because there's certain things you can control and there's most things you can't. Uh, and so if we start with me, 
I'll look for my feelings and circumstances to give me more. Uh, and I'll always be frustrated. It always seems that somebody else has got it out there. Maybe you don't start with you. Maybe you just start with culture. And culture will say, if you just do it this way, if you just act this way, if you just be this thing, then you're going to find the meaning of more. And you know what? Everybody will be watching you. Everybody will be going, yes, that person is doing it the right way, and that person has got it. Uh, and they will be there to watch your destruction. Why? Because you'll never find more outside of God. To claim the promise of God, it makes sense. Where should you start? God. To claim the promise of God, you've got to start with God. Now, I know everybody's excited for the eclipse tomorrow. Uh, and who do you, you know, what, what just kind of goes with me, just like, who do you think put that in motion? God, oh, may he remind us. As you walk out or you hear people talk about that, there is somebody who spoke that into existence, who timed that up perfectly for this time, this place, to not just scream, that was cool, but to remind you through his promises, he wants more. He wants more. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably... Come on now. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all you ask or imagine. According to his power that is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and Christ Jesus throughout all generations. Forever and ever and ever. Amen. That's the key to more. 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4 says it this way. His divine power has granted to us all things. Don't miss that. All things. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us in his own glory and excellence by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in this world because of the sinful desire. 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Since we have these what? On screen? Promises. Since we have these promises, beloved, it's like, come on in close. It's like, come on in close, beloved. Let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. So in other words, if we see anything that we're building on as our foundation that's other than God, let's get it right so we can, we can embrace his promise for more. Well, I can tell you're fired up. One of the ways that we've been talking through a series of promises that God gave us through the celebration of Passover and the fulfillment in Jesus Christ that screams to us even today from Exodus chapter 6, verse 6 and 7. Uh, and it talks as, as we're coming through, we're in this fourth cup. Uh, and the fourth cup of Passover reminds us of the fourth I will promise of Passover uh, that he will bring, not only bring us out, he will not only deliver us, I'm going to turn to it, he will not only restore us, but that he will fulfill us. That's the fourth cup. It says it this way. I will take you to be my people, and I will be your God. It's this promise of, of fulfillment, uh, and it's actually known as the Hallel cup, the, the fourth cup. Hallel, it's praise. And it's interesting, in the Psalms, there are a group of Hallel Psalms, Psalm 113 to 118. Uh, and I want to, to show you some, some encouragement through that this morning that I think leads us to more. Psalm 118, 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Now, I want to stop there. I want you to notice there's a position here. Okay, there's an intentional position here. It's not, oh, give thanks to the Lord. He is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. No, it's an all in. Why? Because when you're holding something back, when you're building on your life on something else than God's more, then you're not really getting what he's saying. 
when you fully surrender to God's promises, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Your steadfast love endures forever. That's, that's when you are truly living in the middle of his more. I mean, th- out of my distress, I called you, Lord. And the Lord answered me and set me free. free. And the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord's on my side as my helper. I shall look and triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than trust in man. It's better to take refuge in the Lord than trust in his princes. Now, I know I'm skipping through. You can read the whole thing. I was pushed back and about to fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. This is not something I think is a good idea. This is not something that I just agree on. This is something that I've grasped on and I'm owning it. I'm living in the middle of it. And he says, the stone the builders rejected have become the what? Cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done this this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Now, cornerstone, an ancient cornerstone was key and the starting point to any building. Now, this is a, a, a resurfaced one, an ancient picture of one, and they spent the most time on the cornerstone. They wanted it perfectly straight. They wanted it perfectly set. Why? Because it determined everything else in the building. Nothing would be plumb. Nothing would be right. Nothing would be on the firm foundation unless you got the first one right. And so they spent extra amount of time. They spent ceremony laying the cornerstone because the cornerstone was key to the right foundation. Isaiah 28, 16. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am the one who has laid as a foundation in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not be in haste. Acts 4.11. Then Jesus, this Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. You read this with me? Building life on Jesus Christ as your cornerstone, is the only way to embrace God's more. Let that filter in. Let that soak into your core. So you can be doing good things and good things that he's created and good things that you agree and good things that would be celebrated, and you still might be missing on the more. Why? Because it's not built on the only cornerstone of God. Well, how can I embrace God's way of life and this promise of more? It takes us back again to these beautiful promises that we've been walking back through over the last few weeks. Exodus 6, 6, he declares, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. It's this promise of salvation. See, If you want more, then you've got to start with God. Because the only way then you can experience His promises is to have a relationship with Him. And you need the rescue of salvation. That's the promise number one. Choose a relationship with Jesus Christ as your cornerstone. That's where I'm going to start. Apostle Paul said, For I've delivered to you as first importance what I also received, that Christ died for us in accordance with the Scripture, that He was buried that he was raised on the third day in accordance to Scripture. That's the gospel story. That's where it must start. Now, it's easy to want more, but if you want to experience God's more, you understand the first step is to have salvation in Christ alone. That's the key. That's, you don't have to do anything to get ready for that, though. Isn't that great? It's a rescue story. It's just like, mm, I surrender. And God rescues us out of our current condition and starts us on a journey through a relationship by faith in Christ alone. That's why we constantly come back and we don't just celebrate Easter as something one time a year. That's why we come back every every Sunday, every chance we get, and we go, thank you, Lord, for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Why? Because that's the foundation. That's where it starts. That's where my faith originates. I start there, and that's what starts changing me from the inside out. He did all the work. I just said yes. 
Isn't it great that he even gives us the chance to say yes? That's how I choose a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you want more, you've got to start here. You got it? If you want more, you've got to start here. Why not? Why not? Why not accept the beauty of all creation? The one who created this eclipse tomorrow is inviting us to be in relationship with him and show you more. It goes on from there. He doesn't just promise to, 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 to take us out, but to deliver us from slavery. You know what? We not only need to escape the bondage which we're in because of sin, we need to deliver from the bondage mindset. Huh? We, we, it's, it's one thing to, to stop doing something. It's, 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 it's another to get that mentality out of us so we don't get, keep going back. That's why we need the promise of freedom. So not only do I need to start with salvation, I just need to surrender by grace through faith in Christ alone. I need to keep coming back so he can begin the healing process of me and this emotional bondage so that as I start with Christ as my cornerstone, then I'll gain emotional freedom. That's a process, isn't it? I mean, it's a process that goes, uh, and it takes some time as I keep going back to the well of Christ, and I have a relationship with him, I keep going back to the well so that he can start healing me from the inside out, Philippians 2.12. That's why we should work our, our salvation with fear and trembling. And you know what? Then he's going to give us the desire and the strength to actually do it. So it doesn't even have to come from me trying or wanting it harder. Again, if you want more, it's got to start with salvation. Uh, and it, and then, it, then it starts kicking in with this process of really emotional deliverance from the inside out. Why? Because I'm still in a sin-filled, broken world. And even though my spirit is set free, this body and this soul uh, is, is still messed up in a, in a world. And so he's doing in the process of delivering me. It goes on. I'm the Lord, I remind you. And I will redeem you. That's what we talked about last week. With an outstretched arm, no matter where you are, what's going on, with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. This promise of restoration. Do you know that God has a purpose for your life? How many people are, are so thirsty looking for God's given purpose? And, and you can go back and spend some time on it. Do you know that if you are in Christ and salvation and he's delivering you, that he's actually gifted you some, some gifts that are by divine design based on that cornerstone to accomplish his plans and your purposes? Oh, that's when you start really uncovering life. So discover your divine purpose restored by the cornerstone. Again, go listen to last week what we talked about. Now, there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are a variety of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. And so you understand there's some steps that you need to follow. If you want more, it's, it starts back here. Well, I want more. I want more. Exodus 6, I will take you to be my own, what? Interesting that he didn't say my own person. Why did he change to plural at that point? I will take you to be my own people, and I will be your God. It's this promise of fulfillment. <coughs> Why? It's because he's calling you and I, to partner within faith community to build on the cornerstone. If you want to really know more, here's where it continues. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, mercy offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not be conformed any longer to the patterns of this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. If you want more, it comes as a surrender to God. It comes as partnering within faith community to build on the cornerstone. What does that look like? 
If Jesus Christ is my cornerstone, uh, that's the source of my salvation. I'm getting that deliverance from those emotional bondage things. I, I'm being restored with the promises. I'm reminded that there is something greater for me than what I can even dream up. Why? Because he's given some purposes, uh, and then he's, he's offered this, me, this promise of fulfillment with more. So it will look like if it, in my marriage, uh, in my family, in my relationships, that I built on and I l- allow to influence everything about them based on the cornerstone. And within the family covering of his people. That's why I was thinking through most marriage ceremonies. What? And gather together and before God and for man. There is something powerful when you make a commitment to God and you share it with other people of like mind and you go, let's do this together. You know that God just does some transforming work with that? It, it empowers in such a way that it's not just an individual. It's a group of people going towards God and for the purposes of God and reaching out and grabbing those things of more. It also looks like in your job and in your purposes, trying to figure out your purposes of life. That's what allows somebody that's doing that same thing the same way and everybody else is giving up. How do you still get up? And how, how do you still give your all? How do you still lead with passion? Because my life is built on the cornerstone. And from that cornerstone, I get the strength and I get the power, maybe even just breath by breath, moment by moment, hello, to live out this life with purpose and meaning with more for his glory. Does that mean I won't get hurt? Does that mean there's not uh, people that will make fun of me? Does that mean that uh, at times there won't be a struggle? No. But I have the promise from Almighty God who has saved me and delivered me and restored me that there's even more than this. Hallelujah. So my time and my talents and my money are something greater than just to be used for my purposes. Why? Because he's given me eyes for his more. So it influences. It's not just, okay, I'm dedicating to you and then I'm doing my own thing and it's just a sunny thing. You understand, if he's my cornerstone, everything is built on him. And so I'm living to please him. I'm I'm living to reach out to others for him. I'm living and using these not for my own purposes. I'm a steward of his resources for him. I'm wanting to claim his more. Friends, this is key to God's more. As we build all of life on Jesus Christ as our cornerstone. You understand all of life. Not just a piece of the pie, but the pie plate. Uh, All of life of Jesus Christ as our cornerstone within the faith family. What happens? We become a unified people transformed into world changers. I like that, huh? I'm not just here for any reason. I'm here to be a world changer, baby. How do I get that? I start leaning on him for everything originates from him as the cornerstone. And I find people of like mind doing that. And I start changing the world. What if you claimed the promise for more today? I mean, you you, you claimed all of these. I mean, you claim salvation. You claim freedom. You claim restoration. Uh, and again, some of these promises, you understand there's it's a process. And you want to be on that promise fulfillment. Notice how this text ends, these four promises. And then you shall know that I am the Lord, your God. When you step into these four promises, then, and I think only then, do you start getting a greater picture of Almighty God, how He really is. And I I am saddened at people that think they have a picture of God and they've never taken any of these steps. There's no way that they could even be looking or thinking about Almighty God like He really is. You want to see somebody 
that's living in the middle of more, they are the most joyful, generous servants around. And it doesn't matter what their calling is. It doesn't matter where, uh, what they're in the middle of. It doesn't matter what job they have. Uh, why? Because it's tied to Jesus as their cornerstone. And it's radiating up and out through their life. May that be you for his glory. Come on. May that be me for his glory. Maybe you'll recognize at the latter part of Psalm 118. Those that were standing welcoming Jesus on Palm Sunday as he entered into Jerusalem were saying, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they were laying down things joyfully at his feet. And Jesus knew their heart and wept. Why? Uh, you know, it goes back to what we've said. What if you build your life on is where you're expecting to find the meaning of our God-given desire to know more. Uh, and so Jesus knew that those that were laying down things before him wanted a political revolutionary. That's not what he was coming to do. Jesus knew that those that were laying down things before him were just proud of their own knowledge and rule keeping of the old testament law and that's why they were laying things down before him and it caused him to weep the same he knows you're in my heart today and he knew even in just a few days after that time it would be the same people that would be calling for him to be crucified Because if your life is not built on the foundation, cornerstone of Jesus Christ, you will be left constantly wanting more. And it will always seem just out of reach. Well, I pray something different for you and I. That's what it means to stumble over Jesus Christ as your cornerstone. That's what Jesus was saying. He was the lamb come to save the world. And they wanted something different. And they stumbled over that cornerstone and were left wanting more. Psalm 118, 28. Oh, but if, if you take these steps, if you, if you enter into the category of a world changer, you'll be able to say, you are my God and I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I stole you. I will give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his steadfast love endures forever mr bob i'm gonna get him to come help me uh celebrate uh, the lord's supper passover communion as it's known and in this i want to and you can go ahead and pass those out if you'll take these uh, elements if you're uh, so inclined and i remind you i'm so proud of you for uh, understanding if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, what do you need to do? Watch. Okay? This is a celebration of what you've done in Him. And so if you have accepted that promise of salvation, then we invite you to participate. What if something's not right in your heart? Or you're just going, I'm just, it's just not there t today. Could I celebrate that and go, you need to take care of it, but right now... Let's put it on pause and, and just leave this on the table, okay? And so we want to have our heart right uh, before him. Now, we've been talking about uh, th this cup and how it's so much a reminder of the past, of how Jesus' death and his burial and his resurrection is the thing that truly, by faith, sets me free. And it's always this thing that I'm going back to remember what he did to impact my present and influence me on how I live out my life today. That's how I live out my life on the cornerstone. But I want to remind you that there's something more. Do you know that Jesus, in his celebration of the Last Supper, and he celebrated the third cup, I will promise, 
And it was the promise of restoration, of, of, of giving us the purpose that he created to be. And, and after that, he took the bread and he gave thanks for it. And he was celebrating this part of Passover where the body was broken for you. And so I want to en encourage you with this, his body broken for you. I remember what Jesus did in the past to impact my presence. God, we thank you. Take and eat. You know, at the Lord's Supper, that last supper, that Jesus did not drink of the last cup. In fact, in Matthew chapter 26, 29, he said, I'm not going to drink of the fruit of the vine again until I come to be with you again. And so uh, as we are reminded right now, the Lord's Supper is in a communion, the Eucharist, all, all names, the table. They don't just point back at an event that's supposed to impact my now. God is reminding us of more. He has more. Do you know that through this, he has promised his return? Oh, let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory for the marriage supper of the Lamb has come, Revelation 19. And his bride has made herself ready, the church, the glorified church. It was granted to, to her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. God is pointing to something more. Do you know the promises are, of heaven are greater than the combination of everything that this earth can offer? Woo! Why? Because our God is a God of more. And so, God, we expectantly look to your return. We thank you that you poured out all your blood for us. May we pour out our lives all for him and his glory and live out as the story of more. Take and drink. Amen. This represents the new covenant of his blood. That's the key to living out his more. Can we say this together in close? So let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Yes, Lord. Let's pray together. Lord, I'm grateful for your grace and your mercy. I'm grateful that you call us into yourself Lord, I pray for each person that they would take inventory of where they stand and not just agree with these beautiful promises of God, but would you allow each of us to be convicted by the power of your Holy Spirit to claim them as our own. Lord, I pray salvation today. I pray deliverance today. I pray restoration today. And, oh, Lord, push us to that next level that only can be built upon you in a faith community of more. I love you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to say thank you so much for uh, your time and, and attention. And we remind you, we give you some next steps that we don't just boot you out from here uh, agreeing with something, but uh, it's, it's something that we hope that you can uh, really to uh, digest this in the group uh, and then go out and, and live that. You can go to northshorefamily.org and that's a place you can give online or you can give in the back. Those are uh, available. And right now we just sign off to those that have joined us online. God bless you. Uh, and we celebrate uh, all that God's doing. And for those that are here, one of the things that we like to do as a way to not just be hearers of the word, as James 